it's my pleasure to introduce, as everyone's getting set up here, Professor Tammy Kinzer Ursa. Many of you uh, know Tammy as an outstanding collaborator across campus. Um, as background, uh, she's a native from Ohio. Uh, she got her undergraduate degree uh, in biomedical engineering from the University of Toledo, and then her master's and PhD at the University of Michigan. Um, but we first found Tammy when she was a postdoctoral fellow out at Caltech studying, of all things, biology. Um, and you'll see quite a diverse talent set here in terms of the projects uh, she, she works on. She joined us in 2013 as an assistant professor and was promoted uh, recently to associate professor. She now holds our Marta Gross uh, named professorship in biomedical engineering as an associate professor. Uh, she's also the director of our undergraduate programs. And so many of you have interfaced with her uh, uh, on the educational front. She's a very dedicated teacher uh, and mentor and developer of curriculum in all different ways, especially hands-on uh, laboratories of which we're most appreciative of. Um, her research is at the intersection of a number of things. I see it as biochemistry and systems biology and of course with an engineering platform. Uh, but the application areas are remarkably broad. And so if you see Tammy's publications, they range from systems biology publications where she's looking at protein networks inside cells and how that maps into cellular behavior uh, to point of care diagnostic systems uh, in rural areas uh, you know, that provide medical information in rapid and, and useful ways. And all of that is based on both our en engineering fundamentals and a really broad knowledge uh, of molecular and cellular biology. So with that, uh, w welcome here today and we're delighted to, to have you present. Thank you so much, George. Thank you. It is a real pleasure to be able to, to present my work to you today. Um, so I'm going to basically reiterate um, what George just introduced uh, in a, excuse me, nope, okay, we're going to get rid of that. Now the whole thing's frozen. We're going to get rid of the technology. There we go. OK, so I'm a native of Ohio, as George mentioned. Uh, I grew up in a small uh, blue collar community called Hicksville, Ohio. I swear that's the name. I have photographic evidence. <laughs> Hicksville, Ohio. Um, it's about two and a half hours from here, uh, just outside of Fort Wayne, actually. We used to go to Fort Wayne, Indiana. It's the closest, biggest city. I was the first one in my family to attend uh, college, so I went off to the University of Toledo, where I started as a double major in chemistry and German. Um, and it wasn't until um, m about my junior year that the University of Toledo started a bioengineering program. Uh, I went to meet with the head there, Ron Fournier, who ended up becoming the dean of engineering at uh, University of Toledo. And his vision for the department, his vision for bioengineering, um, for collaborative research really spoke to me. And so I immediately transferred um, and have been set then on a course towards bioengineering, biomolecular engineering ever since. Um, I mentioned in that meeting, which was supposed to be 15 minutes, turned out to be an hour and a half, uh, that I was interested in undergraduate research. He immediately said I could work with him or I could meet with, uh, work with anyone in the department. And he walked me down the hall and introduced me to all of the faculty that were in this burgeoning bioengineering program. And I ended up doing undergraduate research with one of them, Jeff Johnson, in the area of um, neurological engineering and neural networks. And that completely changed my career trajectory. Um, and I really am hope that I am such an enthusiastic mentor um, and role model for my students as they were for me. So I really have, um, and I, uh, the picture that you see up there is I was given a Distinguished Alumni Award from the University of Toledo just a few years ago. And it's been incredibly rewarding. From there, I went uh, just up the road to Ann Arbor, Michigan, got my PhD in chemical engineering. At the time, there was not very many people working on molecules and cells, and what I call kind of the small side of biomedical engineering 
in biomedical engineering programs. They were just getting started across the United States. And I wanted to look at the molecular level. That was occurring in chemical engineering at the time. So I ended up in Jennifer Linderman's lab, um, and this receptors book here became my Bible. This was um, written by Jennifer Linderman and Doug Laufenberger, and it was uh, one of the first works that demonstrated that you can use dynamical systems, uh, transport equations, chemical reactions, reaction refusion equations, and apply it to cellular systems. Um, and I, my work, as you'll see, has really um, taken a lot of that and applied it now to neuroscience which I learned at the California uh, Institute of Technology. So I went to Caltech. I wanted to pick uh, a, an important physiological problem. Learning and memory really um, piqued my interest, and I ended up in a molecular neuroscience lab there. The, my PhD advisor, Mary Kennedy, um, had identified many of the proteins that are involved in uh, synaptic transduction and synaptic plasticity. So if you remember anything of this talk, it's because proteins inside your hippocampus are constantly moving and interacting and changing the strength of the synapses. Um, we then took uh, applied systems dynamics and applied it to those um, protein networks that are involved in learning and memory. After I finished my postdoc, I went to Maven Biotechnologies, where I was developing a protein-protein interaction system with this startup company. I was employee number four. Um, that was an incredibly rewarding experience um, and was amazing training for starting up my lab here at Purdue. So you'll see um, when I present my work that I've been able to take all of these experiences uh, and build a research program here at Purdue that's been incredibly rewarding. I get to work with amazing students, graduates and undergraduates, um, an amazing set of colleagues at the Weldon School. Um, and it's, again, my pleasure to highlight some of this work for you today. So my lab is affectionately known as the TKU lab because not everybody wants to say Kinzer Ursum all the time. Um, so my students, not to my face, but they say uh, TKU, Professor TKU. Um, so we're the TKU lab and we work on a number of different areas. We work in computational biology, uh, we do some protein labeling and protein engineering, and we've also gotten into biosensing. And I think you'll be able to see how my different experiences um, from the University of Michigan, in neuroscience, and at a startup company has informed everything that I am doing. We really work um, on the whole spectrum of these, um, in these areas. I'm going to highlight just three different, um, three different areas for you today. We'll get off that slide. Okay, so the first one is our work in computational biology. We're really studying the molecular mechanisms of learning and memory. So I mentioned those synapses uh, in your brain. The, um, the axons are coming in and making synapses on your dendrites. There's uh, millions of neurons in your brain, trillions of synaptic connections. And those synaptic connections are constantly rewiring uh, their strength. So those connections are weakening and they're strengthening based on previous, um, ex, uh, previous neuronal activity. The fundamental unit of that are these yellow guys here. So these are synaptic spines. And they're physically shrinking and growing. New receptors and new <coughs> molecules are being inserted. Um, if you zoom in a little bit, you can see that these structures are about 400 nanometers in size. But they're incredibly heterogene heterogeneous. So you'll see this is the presynaptic bouton here. Uh, and we've been really focusing on the other end of that, this heterogeneous structure here, the, um, which is a postsynaptic spine. And it is full of uh, proteins, receptors, scaffolding proteins that are all interacting dynamically, changing in spatial location, changing in strength um, as you learn. We've applied uh, sets of ordinary differential equations. This is just a generic uh, set of differential equations to understand how these um, protein species are changing in concentration um, in time. We've looked at these networks, um, both in isolation, which is what uh, people normally do, um, but we've also taken a view of um, identifying particular limiting resources within, this, uh, within these structures. So calcium comes flooding into the cell at different frequencies. And the strength of the um, synapse is then a function of that calcium flux frequency. It turns out that if um, you view this calcium as a rate-limiting resource, 
uh, you get very different dynamical behavior. Um, so what we see is in a competitive network, the uh, frequency dependence of these, um, of these proteins changes, shifts, and tightens, um, and can be explained only with competition. In absence of feedback, uh, networks, feed forward networks, and spatial localization that p other people have used. So we really think that uh, competitive tuning, which is what we're calling this phenomenon, um, is a way to explain network behavior. We are also using um, agent-based models to describe some of these systems uh, where we can reconstruct the neuron, uh, the spine, and watch the molecules move in space and time. Um, this has given us different predictions about how calcium and comodulin are contributing to learning and memory at the fundamental molecular level. To switch gears, I'll talk a little bit about our protein engineering techniques. Imagine if you could have a window into embryonic development. Imagine if you could look in and identify the subcellular structures that are, um, that are being laid down during development, if you could identify the proteins that are being made and distributed throughout that mouse or that embryo, um, it would be an amazing boon for understanding development, normal development, for understanding developmental disorders, and for understanding disease progression. And that motivation uh, led us to develop this te technique called non-canonical amino acid labeling, where we take non-natural amino acids, which are the building blocks of proteins, we introduce them to, uh, to a pregnant female mouse, and those um, non-natural amino acids get incorporated into the normal uh, translational machinery of the cell and incorporated into proteins. So that where you had a normal methionine previously, you now have, say, an azidohomoalanine, which is the non-natural amino acid, and you have a chemical handle with which you could isolate those proteins during very short windows of time. So say six hours or 12 hours of development. Uh, we isolate them and then we use shotgun proteomics to uh, identify what they are. Um, these techniques uh, have been de all developed here at Purdue um, and are being now used widely um, in many different fields from um, cancer to neurobiology to development. Um, and these are just some of the data we can show that we have differential regulation of those proteins and then we can track them um, in time in different cellular fractions, extracellular matrix, neuro, um, the nucleus, and the cytoskeletal fraction. One last piece is um, our work in biosensing. So this was work uh, done with Steve Worley, where um, the motivation really was uh, the, the disproportionate burden that um, developing and low uh, and middle income countries have in uh, infectious disease. We developed a particle diffusometry technology that basically uses diffusion of nanoparticles as a readout um, and are using the viscosity term in the Stokes-Einstein equation um, as, a, as a molecular detector. So DNA amplifies, let's say there's a cholera toxin gene or a malarial gene in the sample. The DNA amplifies only in, um, if you have that pathogen and this particle diffusometry technique is a readout. This was um, done in the laboratory first with a camera, a microscope, and a computer to crunch the algorithms with a very clever senior design team and a clever graduate student. We've ported that all now to a smartphone platform. Um, this technology is now patented by Omniviz, uh, which is our startup company, and the graduate student is now the CEO. And this has been an incredibly rewarding experience. Uh, later this year, we expect to run a clinical trial on malaria detection in Rwanda, and the company Omniviz is doing uh, trials also later this year on cholera detection in Bangladesh. This will be their third time back. This has been an incredibly rewarding experience to work with all, um, all of the talented people in my lab and um, all of my collaborators. Um, these are my uh, current lab, as you can imagine, doing all of this kind of disparate research takes a large team but it takes a lot of collaboration. And um, I am especially indebted to my collaborators, Sarah Calvey, Steve Worley, Jackie Linnis, uh, Christian Giant, David Thompson, and Catherine Clayton, who's CEO of our startup company. You'll notice the starred students here are all co-advised students. Uh, it's incredibly rewarding to take my skill set and combine that with someone else's skill set and do something together that we could never do independently. Um, I'm over time, so I will stop there and not talk about the teaching and the research, uh, the teaching and the service, which is also an incredibly rewarding part of my job. And I thank you so much for your attention and take your questions.
questions? <laughs> Comments? Well, I can comment on I the extraordinary teaching and service, <laughs> right? Uh, in a way, I, you know, Tammy's one of those individuals, especially on the service front, that just, as you can tell, naturally brings people together. Uh, and uh, so, uh, just as was mentioned before, you know, collaborate with Tammy because the outcome on any front, be it an educational adventure or a research collaboration, will be positive. So I just wanted to make that comment. Thank you, George. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>